In today's video, we will cover seven questions you may see on the private pilot written exam regarding aircraft performance. Let's jump into the questions. What is the crosswind component for a landing on runway 18 if the tower reports the wind as 220 degrees at 30 knots? To find the answer to this question, first subtract the runway direction of 180 degrees from the wind direction of 220 degrees to get 40 degrees. Since the wind speed is reported at 30 knots, draw a line on the 30 degree arc in the diagram as highlighted by the red dashed line in the chart. Then draw a line down from the area where the wind angle line and wind velocity arc intersect. The crosswind component is just to the left of 20 degrees so we can see the crosswind given the conditions is 19 knots. The correct answer is A. Determine the approximate landing ground roll distance for an aircraft given the current set of conditions. The pressure altitude is 1,250 feet, headwind is at 8 knots, and temperature is standard at 15 degrees Celsius or 59 degrees Fahrenheit. Since the pressure altitude is 1,250 feet, which is between sea level and 2,500 feet, we need to take the averages of the ground roll distances at sea level and 2,500 feet. Add 470 to 445 to get 915, then divide by 2 to get the approximate landing ground roll distance at 1,250 feet, which is 457.5. Since there are 8 knots of headwind, we need to decrease the distance by 20%, since the chart says to decrease the distances 10% for each 4 knots of headwind. 20% of 457.5 is 91.5 so subtract 91.5 from 457.5 to get the correct answer of 366 feet. 366 feet would be the approximate landing ground roll needed if the pressure altitude were 1,250 feet, there was 8 knots of headwind, and the temperature was standard. What is the approximate ground roll distance necessary for takeoff under the following conditions? The outside air temperature is 90 degrees, the pressure altitude is 4,000 feet, takeoff weight is 2,600 pounds, and there are 20 knots of headwind. To find the answer to this question, start by drawing a line up from the 90 degree outside air temperature line at the bottom of the chart. Draw the line up until it intersects the 4000 pressure altitude line. Then draw the line to the right and then down until it meets the takeoff weight of 2600 pounds as illustrated in the middle of the chart. Continue drawing the line over to the right until meeting the wind component section. Since there is a 20 knot headwind, draw the line down and to the right until it intersects the 20 knot wind line near the right of the chart. Finally, draw the line to the right. Notice that the line ends up right under the 1000 figure on the far right hand side of the chart. This means the approximate ground roll distance based on the given set of conditions is 800 feet. The correct answer is C. What effect? If any, does high humidity have on aircraft performance? Refer to Chapter 11 of the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge. Since a molecule of water vapor weighs less than a molecule of dry air, moist air weighs less and is thus less dense than dry air. The lower density of air in humid conditions decreases aircraft performance. The correct answer is B. Determine the density altitude for these conditions. The altimeter setting is 30.30, the runway temperature is 25 degrees Fahrenheit, and the airport elevation is 3,894 feet above mean sea level. The first step to solving this problem is to adjust the pressure altitude based on the current altimeter setting which in this case is 30.30. Notice the pressure altitude conversion factor of minus 348 for the altimeter setting of 30.30. We need to subtract 348 from the airport elevation of 3,894 feet to get the adjusted pressure altitude of 3,546 feet. 
Then draw a line up and to the right roughly halfway between the 3,000 and 4,000 foot pressure altitude lines since 3,546 feet is roughly halfway between 3,000 and 4,000. Next draw a line up from the 25 degree outside air temperature line at the bottom of the chart until it intersects the red pressure altitude line. Finally draw the line over to the left to find that the line ends up just above the two in the chart. Since the figures on the left of the chart are showing the approximate density altitude in thousands of feet, we can see the best answer to this question is 2,200 feet since the orange arrow is pointing just above the 2,000 foot density altitude line on the left of the chart. The correct answer is A, 2,200 feet MSL. Which combination of atmospheric conditions will reduce aircraft takeoff and climb performance? See Chapter 11 of the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge for more information on how temperature and humidity affect aircraft performance. Higher air temperatures and high humidity result in lower air density and higher density altitude. The combination of high air temperature and humidity decreases aircraft performance. The correct answer is B. Higher air temperature, humidity, and high density altitude will reduce an aircraft's takeoff and climb performance. What is the expected fuel consumption for a 1,000 nautical mile flight under the following conditions? The pressure altitude is 8,000 feet, temperature is 22 degrees Celsius, manifold pressure is 20.8 inches, and the wind is calm. Since the temperature is 22 degrees Celsius, which is above standard, we would use the figures on the far right. Go down to the row which highlights the power settings, speed, and fuel flow at a pressure altitude of 8,000 feet. To find the expected fuel consumption, we first need to know the expected time in flight, assuming no wind. A pilot would need to account for winds in the time on route calculation if there were expected headwinds or tailwinds. Since the flight will be 1,000 nautical miles and our expected true airspeed is 164 knots, divide 1,000 by 164 to get the expected flight time of 6.1 hours. Since the aircraft is expected to burn 11.5 gallons per hour, multiply 11.5 by 6.1 to get 70.1. Given the current conditions and aircraft performance, the aircraft will be expected to burn 70.1 gallons of fuel during this 1,000 nautical mile flight. The correct answer is C. Thank you for watching the video. Please like the video and subscribe for more flight training and aviation related educational videos.